Hey everybody, uh, today's September 10th. Um, just doing a little recording for you in case you missed class today, had something come up, you know, whatever all the things are. Um, just really quick, a uh, couple of fast things that I found out this morning. Turns out, apparently you guys couldn't see your grades in Infinite Campus. Well, we got that fixed and you should be able to click on things and see assignments that have been entered in in different classes. And also a second thing, um, I graded your first assignments or I'm working on grading your first assignments, I should say. I'm giving, trying to give you guys really good feedback on this first one. If when you get it, you're like, oh, I don't like my grade. If you want to try to apply the feedback and make improvements on it, please do and then resubmit it and I'll take a look at it again and enter a new grade. Um, if you're looking and you're like, you haven't graded anything yet, give me, give me a second, I'm working on it. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be really good about getting you guys the kind of help that you guys need. Also, don't forget you have an assignment due on Friday by midnight on, on September 11th, okay? Now, here's the plan for today. Um, I'll do uh, three totally useless trivia questions with you right now and then I will um, and, and then we'll go into the things for today so first uh, if you're playing a game of battleship how many hits does it take to sink the aircraft carrier okay I'm a little impatient answer in three two one, the answer is five. It takes five hits to sink the battleship, or the aircraft carrier. Sorry, Ugh, you sunk my battleship. All right, second question. Um, if you were playing Mario Brothers, who is the person that you are usually trying to save? The answer is Princess Peach. And last but not least, if we were playing Scrabble or Words with Friends, what two letters get us the most points. The answer is Q and Z. All right, now I'm going to uh, go into present mode here and try to get you guys through the notes for the day and then we'll kind of wrap it up and talk quick. So here we go. All right, first of all, these are our goals for today. You don't have to write these down if you're taking notes, but just so you have an idea of where we're heading. Um, first, I'm going to do a really quick review where I'll go over some of the big ideas. I'll do that before we leave this slide because we might have a quiz tomorrow to start off class. Please be prepared for that. Make sure you look through your stuff and make sure you're prepared. Okay, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss a couple of things on two slides. We're going to talk about the difference between um, Johnson and Congress and why they didn't really get along. Even though their plans were similar, they, they couldn't seem to get along. Then we're going to talk about some things called the Black Codes and talk about how they impacted life in the South. And then we had work time to work on the assignment that's due tomorrow. So um, again, remember, and this is kind of important, if you have any questions on anything homework-wise or class-wise, please feel free to reach out to me via chat, email, or, or whatever means that you know how to get a hold of me. All right, some quick review. Some of the things I could ask on the test tomorrow, I could ask you, um, who was president during the Civil War and the very, very first part of Reconstruction? The answer would be Abraham Lincoln. I could ask you who took over as president when Lincoln was killed? The answer would be Andrew Johnson. I could ask you who killed Abraham Lincoln? And the answer there would be John Wilkes Booth. I could ask what were the years of Reconstruction? And um, your good answer there would be 1865 to 1877. And the last couple of ideas, the 13th Amendment, remember that freed the slaves. The 14th gave all men citizenship. The 15th gave all men the right to vote. And then there were three major questions that needed to get solved during Reconstruction. And they would be, who should be in charge? What do we do with the Southern states? And what rights and freedoms should be given to the freedmen? Now, that's the review. That's the wrap up. So make sure you know that stuff for tomorrow, because if we do do a quiz, it won't be all be on there, but there'll be a few things. Now the new stuff for today. Um, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about political gridlock. Gridlock is what happens when nothing gets done because two sides cannot see eye to eye long enough to get anything done. That gridlock happens between President Andrew Johnson, the guy that we have the picture of on the right, and the Congress, which is mostly made up of Northern Republicans. There were no Southern people in Congress at this point because the Southern places weren't states yet. They weren't back accepted into the country. Now, some quick things about Johnson. Johnson was a Democrat from Tennessee, so he was the opposite political party from most of Congress. He was also from the South, so he was not well liked. Uh, Johnson had some different ideas about how things should go compared to other politicians. And just in a historical perspective, um, a lot of people say that Johnson is one of the worst presidents in the history of our country. A lot of um, history nerds put him in like the top three worst ones ever. 
Now, one of the things that doesn't make any sense here is their plans for how to put the country back together were very similar. Um, they both involved an oath of loyalty, the whole, I'm really sorry, I pledge allegiance to the United States, we'll never do it again type stuff. They both wanted to free the slaves, and the 13th Amendment officially did that in 1865. Now, I did have something come up today where someone said, oh, when the 13th Amendment gets passed, is that what Juneteenth is? The holiday that some of you guys just learned about, some of you guys just learned about this summer. And that's not 100% accurate. June 19th or Juneteenth is a celebration of kind of the last slaves that were notified that slavery was gone. It, it, when a union group of soldiers showed up in Galveston, Texas, and let the Texans know that slavery had been abolished, that happened on June 19th, 1865, and Juneteenth was celebrated for the first time. Okay. Both sides also believed in some amount of punishment to the South. Now, the severities of the punishment varied. Johnson didn't want to punish the Southern leaders that much, while radical Republicans, or the people that were in charge of Congress, wanted to punish the former Confederate leaders very harshly. The hard part to understand here is, if they both basically had the same ideas, why couldn't they get along long enough to get it done? And the reason is simple. It would be like if you were going out with a friend tonight and actually getting to go out in public and do some things, and you said, oh, I'd like to go to Taco Bell and then go to the movies. And your friend looked at you and said, but I want to go to the movies and then Taco Bell. It sounds like a really subtle difference, but it is still slightly different enough that it could, hopefully not, but could cause an argument. The real reasons, they disagreed on the purpose of Reconstruction. Johnson thought Reconstruction was to put the country back together not do a lot of extra things for the for the black people or the freedmen, and also to punish the South but not punish them hard and to let them back in the Union. Radical Republicans wanted to free the slaves, give them full rights and freedoms, and they wanted to punish the Southerners they thought were in charge. But then ultimately, too, one big difference, they were from different political parties. You guys know if you pay attention to the world that President Trump is a Republican and a lot of the House of Representatives led by Nancy Pelosi are Democrats and they do not see eye to eye. They can argue about anything, the color of the sky on a given day, um, COVID numbers, what to do about protests in American cities. And even if they do see eye to eye, they figure out ways to argue about it. All right. So Johnson starts pardoning people. Okay, he starts forgiving the South, old Southern leaders things that they had done wrong in the past. Now, the problem is, as soon as he starts pardoning those old Southern leaders, they're able to take back power. Okay, and so someone who you think did something wrong in the past has now been forgiven and is able to rise back to take power again. And so they're going to reestablish doing things the old way that they did things minus the idea of slavery. And so if you were black and you lived in the South, the mistreatment that you had to deal with continued just under a different name. In response, the Northern governments decided to leave the Union troops all over the South to help try to keep the peace and to protect the rights and freedoms of black people. Now, that's kind of a pretty heavy slide. There's a lot going on there, but, it, but it's really important to the background of things. The problem with all of this isn't just that it's making things take longer, but because things are taking longer, <clears throat> excuse me, there are no answers. And so Southern states, while they're waiting for the plan, decide to take things into their own hands. And the Southern states come up with some pretty evil and devious ways to keep black people from having full and equal rights. First of all, obviously the 13th Amendment was a good thing. It freed the slaves, but it gave them no protection under the law and no rights and freedoms. So, for instance, if you were in the South in 1865 and you were white and you walked up to a black person and you shot them in the head, really no crime had occurred because black people did not have the right to protection under the law. Pretty extreme example, but it happened. Southern states also started to pass laws called black codes. Black codes were laws that only applied to black people in the South. <clears throat> Things like black people were not allowed to own guns. They could not buy or use alcohol. Black people were not allowed to be in relationships with white people. If you were black and you married a white person, you could be thrown in jail, but the white person went unpunished. Black people could be thrown in jail for not having a job. White bosses could hold black people's pay for up to a year. Think about that. You go to work <clears throat> and you work hard and on payday, they tell you, I'm going to pay you a year from now. 
you would probably quit. But if you quit, you're breaking another black code. So now you're going to go to jail. This is all just another form of slavery. I refer to this as a state of semi-slavery. You're not a slave, but you also don't have any real freedoms. Okay. Also, with about the same time, the KKK starts. And we'll talk about that much later in the chapter. But the KKK is a response of people in the South who say the black codes aren't enough. We need to go further. We need to get rid of the black people down here. And so the KKK start trying to scare black people to the north or, in unfortunately terrible cases, kill people. Then later on, segregation becomes more common. Segregation is the splitting of people based on a characteristic, in this case, race. And you start to see whites only water fountains next to a black or colored, they said usually said colored only water fountain. Black people weren't allowed in certain, weren't allowed in hotels that white people could stay in. They had to ride in separate train cars. And if you know about Rosa Parks, that extended on into the 1950s and 1960s. Um, I, I make a point of um, in 2018, there was a high school in Mississippi that had their first ever prom where white and black students could go to the same dance on the same day at the same time. They had always had two separate proms. So that was kind of a quick run through of what we talked about today. Um, don't forget that your reconstruction overview is due um, Friday by midnight. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, I hope you were able to get caught up. And, um, you know, good, good luck. We'll see you tomorrow.